Chapter 28 Git Clone If you've ever used Git before, chances are Git Clone was the very first command you used. That is because unlike Git init, which creates a repository locally, Git Clone will set up a local copy of a pre-existing repository that exists somewhere else. This somewhere else can be many different things. It can be another folder on your computer, a shared drive or network mount, a remote location that you can access over SSH or another tunnel, or the most common scenario, a Git hosting service like GitHub or GitLab. No matter where we are cloning from, Git refers to the source repository that we are cloning from as the remote. To make all of this a bit more hands-on, let's practice by cloning a repository from GitHub. There are, of course, millions of repositories on GitHub, but I have set up a repository for this purpose, so let's use that one. It will be our remote, and you can find it online at github.com slash joostdecock, which is j-o-o-s-t-d-e-c-o-c-k slash git dash training. Once again, github.com slash joostdecock slash git dash training. Git can use several protocols to talk to the remote. When cloning a repository from GitHub, the very first choice we have to make is choosing the protocol we want to use since this will influence the URL that we have to pass to the git clone command. The URL can be found on the repository page of the hosting service. GitHub has a big green code button, whereas GitLab has a big blue clone button. Both of them give you a dropdown that lists the URLs to clone with either SSH or HTTPS. When possible, you should always pick SSH. It has a number of benefits and it's what we'll use in the examples below. However, you should know that you need to set up your SSH keys to do so. Refer to the documentation of your Git hosting provider of choice for more details. Alright, so to clone a repository, we run git clone followed by the URL that you copied from the website. In our case, to clone with SSH, we run git clone and then altogether the URL git at github.com colon joostdecock slash git dash training dot git. When we run this command without specifying anything else, Git will create a folder in the current directory that has the same name as the remote repository. In this case, git-training. If we wanted to clone this repository in a different folder, we can specify an alternate name after the command. For example, if we clone into if we use the command git clone, git at github.com colon yostcock slash git training dot git space other dash name git will clone this repository in a folder called other dash name congratulations you have cloned your first repository if you enter the directory you will find the familiar dot git folder that holds all of git's internals this repository will behave just like the local one we created earlier but there are subtle differences that can tell you this repository was cloned from a remote repository one place you will see a difference is when you run git log. You'll be able to see that the head and main labels are on the most recent commit as expected, but in addition there are two other labels, origin slash head and origin slash main. The location of the origin slash head and origin slash main labels indicates where the head and main labels are on the origin repository, or more accurately, where they were last time git talked to the origin. Another way that you confirm that this repository was cloned from a remote is by running the git remote command. If you do so, git will return origin, which is not all that useful. But if you add the minus v flag for verbose, it will give us a bit more info. Git remote minus v will show us that git has not one, but two URLs for origin one to fetch and one to push. So let's look at what fetch is all about in the next chapter.